everybody, Brooke Fletcher here, and welcome back to another episode of the third half. I hope you guys had a great weekend. And this is what we have on deck for you guys this evening. We have River Rouge football head coach, Coach Corey Parker, on the show. Uh, we had a chance to follow him around all last week. Um, and so we got to see what it was like in the day of Corey Parker. Uh, also, Robbie Fabry forward for the Detroit Red Wings. We have him on to talk about this season and, and get to know some of the players a little bit better. But before we get into all that, first, let's start with uh, what's been going on in the world of sports this past week. NBA season is finally underway. The Pistons are showing a lot of promise. It'll be interesting to see what this team really can do. And, and the arena was packed. And speaking of the NBA, drama uh, is still brewing in Philadelphia. Ben Simmons finally showed up to Philly, um, but there's there's still some things that, that need to be resolved. Hopefully they can get it all figured out because I think for the city's sake, for the team's sake, um, we just need to get something going. Uh, also, postseason baseball, there's nothing like it, right? Braves and Dodgers, that series has been incredible. And then we had the double Grand Slam in Boston. It's been a lot of fun to watch. All right, we just wrapped up the regular season of MHSAA football, and of course, we had to finish on a high note, right? So we traveled downriver to watch River Rouge take on Southfield A&T. Now, River Rouge has had a very successful run for the, over the last few seasons, and a huge part of that is because of Coach Corey Parker. Well, everybody knows uh, his name, and not only is he a great football coach, but he just means a lot to the community in River Rouge. And so we wanted to learn more about him and what his everyday life is like. So we went down river to spend the whole day with him uh, to see what a day in the life of Corey Parker was like. Take a look. Me you know, coming up here, making sure the kids not hanging out. Yeah, exactly. So pretty much just a, uh, uh, how my days go you know, outside of football. Oh, okay. They see me, I can see them. Instead of being reactive and suspending them or giving them detention, I should have been in front of them in the first place. These are our seniors and juniors that, that drive. So I got everybody, them and the kids coming off the buses. Hey, let's go! Morning, what's up, Neely, you good? Coach Parker, he's been here since March of 2009. You're actually the person that hired him. So what stood out to you? Why was he the guy that you wanted to hire? My first language is energy. And Coach Parker has phenomenal energy. And there's just something about him that he is extremely genuine. Um, I've not met you know, anyone who I think exudes not only leadership and confidence, but humility. Oh, now this is perfect. Everybody in class already. Look at that, this is beautiful. District-wide, when I arrived, we had 900 students. We have 2,400 students now. And Coach Parker is the architect of that. He's transformed the community. Um, but, you know, people think it's about football, and it's really not. So he's an investor, but he invests in young people. And so one person at a time, he plants these seeds, and the return on the investment is phenomenal. What's up? You in the back talking? I can say, what you see every day, what you see in person is what you, is, is genuine and is what you get. He works like three jobs when I met him. Like, he was driving down to Detroit, he was playing football, he was, I was like, wait, hold on. Like, where is a lot going on here? Um, so even then, when, even when I first met him, he always was just a person who just really gave 110% all the time in, in everything he does. And I think the drive for the students is just to give them what he may not have had. And I think that's a lot of what drives them, just so they can have a better outcome. My man. Wins and losses, the community might care about that more than he does. He's worried about kids going to the next level, whether it's just going to play football or just going to trade school, going to school to be a regular student. It's not really about the wins and losses and the trophies. It's just about making it to the next step. At this point, he probably means everything to River Rouge. When you say River Rouge, you definitely are going to say Corey Parker, just like you might have said, Lofton Green. This is from our mayor, a uh, key to the city of River Rouge, um, which is just unbelievable. 
uh, experience. It was right. It was the uh, the state championship parade, and oh, so wow. it was yeah, just crazy. This is the game ball where all of the players signed it uh, for me. It's pretty incredible. Yeah. Did people buy in right away? No, they tried to run me out of town. They thought I was the craziest person in the world because I was kicking off all of the guys that people knew were good players, drug related, gang related, and low GPAs. And I didn't want that representing us. I'm a kid from a group of parents that had me when they were 17 years old. My dad couldn't go and play college football because they were pregnant with me prom night. You know, yeah. my mom couldn't go and run college track. She was pregnant with me prom night. So they're my motivation every day. I don't know. I don't get to tell them that much, but I just show it. You know what I mean? John. There you go. Somehow we find a way to win championships. And most importantly, somehow we find a way to send multiple kids to college year in, year out. That's going to be my claim to fame. The day that I'm pushing daisies <laughs> is going to be a lot of guys that got a lot of degrees by way of the structure that I believe I put in place with my program. They going to surrender or they going to keep swinging? I am not in control of that. Guess who is? Who? Uh, who? Uh, it's that simple. I don't leave nothing out there ever. I give it my all every single day. So at the end of the day, I'm just a football player, right? And that's the only way I knew how to play the game, was to leave it all on the field. That's all I know. So every day, that's what I do. And I'm going to have flaws. I'm going to have days where somebody, oh, he should have told someone else to do that. Or someone else could have did that for him. Well, guess what? I did it. I'm going to give it my all because that's all I know how to do. Leave it all on the field. And so every day I say, I, I'm going to leave it all on the line for everybody I got. I'm not really sure how Coach Parker keeps up with everything, but um, I know he is doing great things down in River Rouge, and I'm so appreciative that he let all of us follow him around and spend the day with him. He and his family, they're amazing. I, I see what the hype is about. They're really great people. So best of luck to them uh, as the season continues. But the Red Wings, they are in the middle of their season, and I had a chance to sit down with Robbie Fabry. He's the forward on the team. Um, he missed a good bit of the season last year, so we talked about this upcoming season, expectations, and also wanted to get to know his teammates a little bit better. So we played a, a fun little game to learn more. Take a look. All right, Robbie, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. More importantly, how are your dogs? How are Chelsea and Hugo? I've been stalking their Instagram as I was prepping for this interview. How are they doing? They're doing great. Um, they're excited to be watching the games. Uh, we leave it on for them when, when I come to the rink. So, uh, yeah, they're doing really well. <laughs> now that you have a few games on your belt, how are you feeling about this season in your game? Uh, feeling good. Um, you know, it's nice to, to get a few uh, games at home here with, with the crowd back in the building. And, um, yeah, no, so it's, it's been different this year, which is nice. A lot of people are calling you guys scrappy, playing with a lot of grit. What's the morale like in the locker room? You know, what can you tell me about this team? Um, we're, we're a team that, that wants to keep moving in the right direction. And uh, to do that, we have to compete as hard as we are every night and, um, and, and not back down. Um, you know, we're not, we're not the biggest team or the toughest team, but, you know, we'll, we'll show up to all those scraps for sure. Yeah, you guys are playing like you're tough. Getting into the <laughs> it's entertaining as a fan, I must say. I must say. All right, well, we're, we're still trying to get to know a lot of you guys. We have some new faces. Um, it's early in the season, so we're going to play a little game. So I'm going to list off a few categories, a few superlatives, and you're going to, you know, appoint one of your uh, teammates to, to one of the categories, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who has the best beard? Uh, I'll have to go with Nick Letty on that one. Keeps it nice and dark. Day. Nice, nice. Who's the best dressed? Uh, I'd say Stetch. He's just always dressed really nice. One of those days when you're tired after a game and you just feel like throwing track pants on, he comes in in a nice outfit all the time, very professional. Okay. Who's uh, the most talkative? I'd say Tyler Bertuzzi. You can always hear his laugh throughout the room. Oh, that's what was going to lead to my next one. Who has the best <laughs> laugh? Is it him? Well, I'll double down on Bert on that one. <laughs> Who uh, has the best bromance on the team? Um, well, I think it's an easy one. Uh, Cider and Raymond, you know, coming up together and uh, 
you know, they're, they're having a lot of fun and enjoying their, their first year together. So it, it's nice to see. And finally, who's got the best locker? Who's always, everybody's just hanging out at their locker. Who, who is it? Um, I'd say Stalzy at that one. Stalzy? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he attracts a lot, of, a lot of guys. He's a lot of fun. We appreciate Robbie taking the time uh, to sit down and chat with us. But, yeah, before I let you go, you guys, I just have one more thing. As I mentioned before, there's nothing like postseason baseball, right? Well, this is probably one of the best things I've seen this postseason. Bleacher Baby, or what some people call Fenway Baby. His real name is Giovanni. He's a five-month-old that goes to a lot of the Boston Red Sox games. And this is him chugging his milk bottle. And as you can, you can hear the fans chanting MVP, chanting chug, five months old, and he's already like a celebrity. So good for Giovanni. Good for him. All right. Well, it's been a fun show, you guys, but unfortunately, I got to let you go. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.